So, secondary storage. Whilst RAM, or not that kind of RAM, that kind of RAM, random access memory is volatile, meaning that if we switch the power off to a computer, it loses everything that's on there. We also need secondary storage, where when the power gets switched off on the computer, it doesn't lose its contents, it is long-term memory. So it's non-volatile. It doesn't lose its contents when we switch off the computer. It's there for the long haul. Because we might store lots of pictures, music, video these days on our secondary storage, we therefore need lots of it. Because we need lots of it, it needs to be cheap. But because it needs to be cheap, it is therefore slower than main memory. How do we judge the quality of secondary storage? First thing, capacity. How many files can it store? How many megabytes, gigabytes, terabytes can it store? Speed. How fast can data be read from or written to the disk? Portability. How easy is it to carry the disk around? Durability. How sturdy is it? How likely is it to get damaged? And reliability. How long will it last for? Is it likely to break halfway through the time that we want to use it? If we have a table, a bit like this one, with the different types of secondary storage down the side, we can see that they fit into two main categories. Magnetic, optical, sorry, three main ca categories. Magnetic, optical, and flash, or also known as solid state memory. Now, if we had to fill out this table, we'd be able to use textbooks or websites on computing and computer science to find out things like how portable each of these things is. We could probably use our own common sense to think about how portable an internal hard disk is in comparison to a USB memory stick. We'd also be able to find out from textbooks and websites how durable and reliable things are. And again, we could probably use our own common sense or textbooks to find out where typically each type of memory, secondary storage, is used. If we wanted to find out costs, capacities, and speeds, so we might go to a website that sells those sort of things because they're constantly changing. Capacities are getting larger, prices are often coming down, and speeds are getting faster. So we might go to a website like ebuyer.com. It's a very good value for money website for hardware. So uh, if I wanted to search for internal hard drive, might be the first one on my list. So I type in internal hard disk or it's coming up as drive and straight away I can see some of the uh, ones that they offer the prices but also importantly the size so this one for instance three terabytes for almost a hundred quid and um, we could if we know where we're looking see that this uh, particular disk spins at three seven thousand two hundred revolutions per minute it's got 64 megabytes of cache built onto it, faster memory built onto it. And if we go into even more detail, we might find some other stuff out, such as data transfer speeds, although I can't see uh, those straight away. Next one on the list, external hard drive, so you could search for that. Magnetic tape is something that not many people know much about, so it's worth looking up. like internal and external hard drives, or some of them at least, uh, the technology used is uh, magna mag magnetic and uh, it's quite a slow technology and these tapes are used to used for backing up data and sending off site um, for safekeeping. So we can see here £18.50 for 400 gigabytes um, for this tape, although you need a, a particular tape reader to be able to accept them. Um, Let's see if there's any more information about it. Nothing to do with speeds there. Um, so you might need to dig a little deeper, maybe things like Wikipedia, to be able to find out typical speeds of some of these um, storage devices.